Morning, church. Uh, just want to mention to those of you that feel that God is calling you to make New Life Church your spiritual home in Mossel Bay, then we encourage you to do a course called Growth Track. It's a one-night course, and it's on tonight, 6, six o'clock this evening. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, please, uh, you can sign up at the information desk and um, just to help us prepare better. But it, it, we cover our purposes, we cover our mission statement, we, we just share where we're going, who we are, and um, what we expect of partners in fellowship at New Life. Uh, Paul, a few, on a few occasions, says that we, we need to be of the same mind. And to be able to do that as a church, we need to know where we're going. The Bible says that can two people walk together unless they are agreed? You can't. So we need to be agreed on where we're going. And uh, I'd love to invite you to tonight to Growth Track if you haven't done it yet, if you want to know more about the church. Also, this Wednesday night, it's the third Wednesday night of every month, we have a meeting called Pizza with a Pastor. One of my favorite meetings of the month. Um, but it's... I'm visually impaired, so it's very difficult for me to connect with people in a crowd or uh, far away. So why we have this meeting is so that I can be get up close and just put names with faces. So we cap it at 12, just so that we, um, we don't defeat the purpose for the meeting. Um, but we order in pizza. We, we'll have it in this cafeteria here, the West Side Cafe. And um, if you are new... Or if you've been away for two years, somebody came up to me last week, said this is the first time in two years they've been back in church. And uh, I said, welcome home. They said, no, I feel at home. So the thing is that there are still people, and, and listen, for whatever reason, uh, that you know still wanted to distance themselves from crowds and that. So um, I understand that. I get that. So, uh, But if that's you, then hey, sign up. And uh, let's enjoy some pizza and let's get to know uh, each other better. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to ask questions about the church as well, about Eric and myself. Uh, ask any question you want. She takes the hard ones. I take the easy ones. But Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, that's the third Wednesday of every month. If you can't make it this, this month, the sign-up sheet for June is already out there. So sign up for June then, third Wednesday night. Okay, but that, what time is that, Lauren? That's... That's 6.30. So it's Wednesday night for Pizza with the Pastor. It's Wednesday night, 6.30. Tonight, growth check is 6 o'clock. Right. I was going to be sharing part two of the Haggai message that I preached a few weeks ago on f putting first things first. If you can remember, um, it was t taken from Haggai where the people come back from captivity and started rebuilding the church. They're rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. They were starting to rebuild the temple of God, but, they, but then they spent most of their time and energy on building their own houses and homes. And God had to say, listen, it's time for you to spend, to, to, to prioritize my house, my temple. So um, part two of that I was going to share today, but I've, I've decided, felt that I needed to go in another way. So that real, I'm going to keep for the 29th. In two weeks' time, I will conclude that message. Um, but today I want to share something else. Carrie Newoff said that the biggest mistake that we can make with evil is to overestimate it or underestimate its influence. You see, there are some people that deny the existence of the devil. They don't believe that there's an entity, a person called Satan. Now, when we do that, we're actually calling Jesus a liar because Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. He taught on evil. He taught on the devil. He taught on Satan. He taught on demons. He taught on the kingdom of darkness. So there's that one extreme where people just deny the existence of the devil. There's the other extreme where you talk to some Christians sometimes and they will talk to you. When they talk to you, they, talk more, they mention more the devil than they do Jesus. The devil, you know, and, and listen, Satan is happy with both extremes. He's happy if you deny his existence. He's happy if you spend more time discussing him than Jesus. 
The devil does not have ultimate power, but he does. He is not powerless. Okay? We need to understand that. And that's why Peter warns us in 1 Peter chapter 5, he warns us to be alert, to be sober minded, to be vigilant, to be cautious at all times. He says, because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Amplified Bible goes on and says he roams around in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. I believe Peter probably got this imagery from from a a strange verse in the book of Job, in the Old Testament. And in Job 1, in verse 6, we read this. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, before the Lord. And Satan also came along with them and the Lord asked Satan from where are you uh, from where do you come Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it so he's just prowling around that's what Peter I believe is using this analogy to this imagery of Satan like a roaring light just prowling around roaming around seeking who seeking prey seeking whose lives he can destroy Paul warns the church in Corinth, and he says, don't be uh, exploited. Don't allow Satan to exploit you, um, because we know, of his, we know of his clever schemes and his wiles and his intentions. Never forget that hell fights you for what heaven has called you. And he'll fight you until your last breath. He will try and destroy the purposes of God in your life, he'll try and rob you. Of God's plan. So this morning I want to share four strategies that the enemy uses and has been using for millennia to destroy lives, to destroy churches. And number one is division. See, God is for unity. God is for community. God is for fellowship. God is for the family. The devil is not. The devil is for disunity. And... uh, in fact, in, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul lists uh, the, the practices or the characteristics of people who are led by Satan, who are deceived by Satan into a lifestyle. Um, and he influences them, Paul says, through hatred. If so, in other words, these are, these are, these are, this is a list of things we do not, characteristics that we do not want to be spreading, that we do not want to allow Satan to use us to do. Um, or to practice, and he, he lists them as hatred, as jealousy, fits of rage, dissension, factions. These are the these are the habits and their behaviors and activities that the devil wants us to be caught up in. But when we allow the Holy Spirit to control us, or when we follow God's ways, he lists what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you and in a church, and he lists them as love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What a contrast. What a contrast. Obviously, we need to, every day, we need to be cooperating with the Holy Spirit so that we can be spreading or influencing with these characteristics, not with the devils. Hate, division should never be part of a Christian's walk. God commands, the Bible says, God commands his blessing where people live in unity. When we live together in love, when we live together in forgiveness, when we live together with compassion, God commands his blessing. That's how God wants us to live. The second strategy that the devil uses is pride. Now, we we know all the verses about pride. Uh, You know, pride comes before a fall. One of the translations says in Proverbs that when pride comes, destruction follows. James says that uh, God opposes the proud, but he, gives, he shows grace or shows favor to the humble. It is said that the most difficult character test is not failure, but success in life. When we succeed at sports, we begin to think, hey, we're better than the rest. When we succeed in business, we think, hey, you know what, we know it. We, we, we just got it together better than all the others. 
when we succeed academically, well, our brains are better than theirs. We've got bigger brains. <clears throat> succeed um, <clears throat> when we <clears throat> own more, own bigger things than everybody else, got more toys, and we think, well, we've arrived, and uh, we're just much better than all the others. In the Old Testament, there was a song that uh, King David came back from a, from a, a, a war with uh, the Philistines from a battle. David played a big part in that battle. They were on there. They'd won the victory. They were marching back to ho home now. They were going through the villages and towns of Judea. And the woman came out singing and dancing. And the words of this song was, David, uh, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. And of course, that, that really riled up King Saul uh, to jealousy. But there's a, there's a song... The words to the song today can go, if poverty has slain its thousands, prosperity has slain its ten thousands. Somehow when we get, when we arrive or when we achieve or when we think, we, you know, we own more, got more in the bank, we begin, we begin to get arrogant and proud. And you know what, if pride is not dealt with regularly, regularly, on a daily basis, Pride will win. And when pride comes, destruction follows. So the Bible says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. The third, another very popular strategy that the devil is using lately, or seems to be using a lot more these days, is the smudging or the blurring of moral lines. Over the past years, this is, these are things that I've heard or read on news clips. One person was accused of falsifying their CV. In other words, adding false qualifications onto their CV that they didn't have from institutions that they never were part of. And when they were challenged as to, you know, why uh, were they lying, their reply was, I didn't lie, I misrepresented myself. No, you lie. The other one was, they were accused of theft. And their response was, I didn't steal, I misappropriated funds. No, you stole. C.S. Lewis said in his book, wrote in his book, The Screwtape Letters, he said, the safest road to hell is the gradual one. The gentle slope, without sudden turns or without signposts. In other words, when we just gently, just gently, just slowly, you slide off the pathway to heaven and you move on to the highway to hell. Years ago, I read this illustration and I checked it with a, with a friend, a pilot friend of mine this week and he corroborated the figures. If NASA sent you in a spaceship to the moon, and you were just one degree off course at launch. One degree, 360 degrees in the compass. You were just one degree off course at launch. After two kilometers, you'd be 28 meters off course. But it's not much. It's just one degree. By the time you get to the moon, you will miss the moon by over 6,000 kilometers. Now from Joburg to Mauritius is just over 3,000 kilometers so you're going to be flying from Joburg to Mauritius and back to Joburg. That's the distance that you're going to miss the moon. All you did was just, you were one degree off course at launch. Just one degree. So how do we, how do we get to live with these blurred lines regarding our moral standards? How, do we, how, do we, how does our moral compass shift just that one degree of course, it happens, I believe, when we start to compromise on the little things, on the small things. That's where it starts. Just a little deduction on my taxes that I'm not really entitled to. Just a little white lie on that insurance claim form. Nobody's going to know. It's just one degree. Just a little flirting with, with someone that is not my spouse.
maybe taking something from the office or taking something from the work that I feel entitled to but that I'm not entitled to. It's just one degree. But something has shifted inside of you. Something shifts in your heart. And the moral lines become smudged and blurred. If we're not faithful in the little things, we're not going to be faithful in the big things. Obedience may seem boring, may seem inconvenient, may seem old school, old fashioned for now, in the short term, but it is richly and deeply satisfying in the long term. And number four, fourth strategy that the devil uses a lot is discouragement. Robbing you of your courage to go on. Every single day, every single day, the devil and his demons are out sowing discouragement and lies. Every day. And discouragement says, I'm not good enough. I'm not making a difference. I'm never going to achieve anything. I always mess up. What's the point? I might as well just give up. Things are never going to change. Yeah, and we've all been there. We've all been there. But those messages, WhatsApp that the devil sends out every day, they're not from God. They're not of God. The best antidote to a lie is truth. Who are we following? Jesus said, follow me. We are following him. Then he said, I am the truth. Just follow Jesus. He's truth. What he says, bank it. It's truth. Especially the truth about yourself. Fight the lies by going on a diet of truth. Why? Because what you believe to be true will control you, whether it's true or not. Don't forget that. Where, what you believe to be true will control you, whether it's true or not. A beautiful young woman suffering from, is it bulimia? What's that other thing? Hey? Anorexia. Can look at herself in a mirror. Now, before she's got the disease or the illness, beautiful. Everybody else look at her and say, beautiful, you're beautiful. But she's hearing, I'm too fat. It's not true, but that's what she's believing. So it controls her and she can destroy her life. What you believe to be true will control you whether it's true or not. You must go on a diet of truth. What does God say about you? Don't listen to what the devil says about you. He's out to lie to you. Somebody asked me the other day, what is my plan for losing weight? So I told him, those of you that know me, we've been here for 28 years. Every couple of years I have to uh, watch what I eat because like, now, just after Christmas, I think it was a day or two after Christmas, I got on the scale. The scale said one at a time, please. So <laughs> I realized, okay, time out. The party is over. You know, we could blame it on the COVID kilos. We, uh, we blame it on the comfort food kilos. Blame it on Christmas kilos. But eventually the party had to stop. So I go on what I call my Italian pasta eating plan. Those of you that know me, every couple of years I have to go on my Italian pasta eating plan. It works for me. I think it can work for you as well. Do you remember how it works? I will tell you. I must walk a pasta the pizza shop. I must walk a pasta the KFC shop. I must walk a pasta the cookie shop. I must walk into the vegetable shop. 
and I must eat the vegetables. If you, it works. It works. If you want to live in truth, if you want to follow Jesus, you have to go on a diet of truth. And what the devil tells you, what Jesus tells you, what the word of God tells you, feast yourself on truth. And this is truth. I am forgiven. And my sins are washed in the blood of Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am raised up with Christ Jesus and seated in heavenly places. I have been rescued from the kingdom of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God. I am part of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am an ambassador for Jesus Christ. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me. I am God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who loves me. That's truth. Feast yourself on God's truth. Don't be discouraged by the lies of the devil. Every single day Satan sends out his minions to sow discouragement and lies. Where are the sons and daughters of God who are going to spread and sow encouragement? Because you know, we are all called to evangelize. We're not all evangelists, but we are all of us called to evangelize. We are not all we're all called to encourage people, but we're not all, we don't have the gift of encouragement, but we're all called to encourage people. Paul, when Paul writes to the, 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 the church in Rome, he says, we, we have all, we have different gifts according to the grace that God, that each one of us has, that God has given us. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is a, a leadership Lead diligently if it is encouraging, encouragement to encourage others, then give encouragement. And never before, I believe, does the church need, in my lifetime, does the church need encouragers to stand up and encourage fellow believers. We're coming out of two years of a pandemic, living under a pandemic, two years or more of economic destruction. Throw in load shedding, throw in different levels of living, blah, blah, blah. All of us need encouragement. So please be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because if you wake up in the morning and you say, Father, use me today, whatever, whatever capacity you want to use me, use me. The Holy Spirit, we're probably going to drop a name or two into your heart. You know what? Pray for them. But maybe just send them a text or give them a call or have a coffee with them just to encourage them. People are hurting. Let's be encouragers. So, as I close, let's heed. Let's heed the warning of Peter and Paul to be alert, to be vigilant, to be cautious at all times because Satan is on the prowl for your soul. He's out to trash your life. And these are just four strategies that he'd like to use. There are many more in his toolbox. Don't allow him to exploit you through his clever schemes or strategies. And I want to end with this verse. I want to say to you, I want to say to you, I want to say to you, please never forget this verse. Greater is he who is in you than he that prowls around in the world. Amen. Amen. Can you stand? I want to pray, please, before we close with a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, your word says that if we resist the devil, he will flee. 
not because of our strength, but because of who we are in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that authority, Lord God. We thank you for that authority, Father. And Lord, as we run our races, Father God, we pray for strength, we pray for wisdom, Lord. We pray that you'll keep us alert, Father God, to the schemes, to the wiles of the enemy. But help us to run our race, Father, with passion, with purpose. Help us to run in strength, Father God. Help us to become better at encouraging others along this way too, Father. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen.